Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette and our series, Taking It Apart. Today, we'll be taking apart four pairs of Elm Atman's shoes. Why would you do that, you might ask, considering that we already did an Is It Worth It Elm Atman's? Well, as you might know, ownership of Elm Atman's has changed a few times over the last few decades, and some people argue that the quality has deteriorated over time. By cutting them all apart and comparing them side by side, we can really understand what has changed and if that was a change for the better or for the worse. We bought all the shoes for the video. There is no sponsorship. Um, nothing was paid for. This is 100% our own truth, unbiased opinion. So first we want to take off the sole and starting with the heel block. With enlightenments, typically in the, the new ones, they all had a solid rubber block. All right, you can see here, this is the rubber heel block. You can see their nails, their nails in there, in the heel. So it's basically nailed down. If you look here, the heel seems to be made of leather. You can see your little edge, meaning there are different layers of leather. I don't know if they buy it like that and then just add it to the shoe in one piece, which is I think what they do. I don't think they'll build up a leather heel one layer by layer like they would do at a custom shoemaker. All right, here's the heel block. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nails. One, two, three or four letters of leather, basically. All right, let's take apart the newest model from the current ownership with a new branding. And uh, this one here is a Grandview um, model in a walnut letter. You can see the stitching is not quite perfect. So uh, there's a little bit like a smudge on the sole. I think this is a second, but it's made the same way as the uh, prime first grade quality. So uh, let's take a look. Okay, heel looks pretty similar to the old ones. It just doesn't have the AE branding on it. Now the leather heel, again, we have these seven nails here, pretty much like before. Okay, leather material seems to be very similar to what we had before. All right, now let's take apart this Sanibel loafer it is the second oldest of the new shoes we have. And uh, it's slightly different than some other elements. First, if you look here, you don't see the weld stitching. It's concealed, but it's still a good your welted shoe. Um, second here, you have that moccasin toe construction, similar to the other loafer. And uh, you can even see here that the thread was flamed off, must be synthetic of some kind, which is fine, it's durable. Um, when I was at Allen Edmonds in uh, Port Washington, they said that all of that hand stitching is done in the Dominican Republic, yet the whole shoe is still always uh, marked as handcrafted in the US. So I thought it was an interesting side note. In here you can see it says no warranty, so it assumed this was a second and it was stamped that way at the time. Okay, same looking Allen Edmonds uh, rubber patch and they also kind of angle that because the idea is that when you walk, the inside corner doesn't get caught in your cuffs or turnips. So now this is interesting. If you see here, there's a little nail 
but um, definitely not the nails that we're used to seeing otherwise. Looks like maybe like a compressed kind of fibrous leather. It's interesting, not like a top grain for sure. Now here though you can see there's some nails in here, but they're nailed in the other way. They're nailed in top down, not bottom up. All right, next layer here, very similar to the top one. You can see it's like layered in here. So to me, it seems like this is a compressed leather product in the heel as well, but maybe of slightly higher quality than what we had before. Here we have the oldest ones of the modern Ellen Edmonds shoes. And it's kind of funny if you look here, it's a slight, uh, the broguing piece still stuck in there after all this time. <laughs> um, the model is called Strawfoot. Uh, you can see the inside sole still has the kind of slightly older Ellen Edmonds logo, which is the same as on the sole. Um, the next one had the same kind of sole logo, but a different inside one. That's why this is a little older. And it's also, as you can see, it's kind of a spectator with some canvas. So I'm just curious to see what, what we'll have here. Yep, looks very much the same again. Elementman's rubber heel here. All right, seven nails here again. And you can see the typical kind of thicker on the outside, thinner on the inside. Looks more like cardboard, but it still feels a bit like leather. You still can recognize the layers. Now that we cut open four more modern element shoes, we're curious, how did they change from back in the day? So we found two pairs here that are original old. They have the Alan Dash Atmans slogan on the inside. Um, based on the catalog information, this is from the 70s here, because it was only produced up in the 70s. It's called the Biscayne. Then we have this model here, which is the Leeds, which is in fact still available today. I mean, the last has changed, but I mean, look at this thick leather sole. Again, Alan Edmonds Ostendo cushioned heel. So we'll see how cushioned the heel actually is. We'll take these apart and we compare them to the modern ones. So without further ado, let's get started here. Um, I'll start with the Biscayne. Short thing to start is the Elites one has the heel with the Ellen Edmonds on it. The Biscayne just has a lighter color. They probably didn't want to use black, but they didn't have that branded Ellen Edmonds. Also, if you look on the Biscayne, the Ellen Edmonds labeling, here it's pretty center. Here it's kind of slightly off center, so I don't know if there were seconds. But you can see there's not much wear on them. They haven't been resold. This is all original, old condition, which is pretty cool. Got my good pry bar here. Huh? Glue still. Who's still working? Look at that big heel pad. If you look at it here, we still have those seven nails that we saw before. Pretty cool. Let's take, let's take the rest of the heel off. Man, you can see I'm having problems here. The nail just doesn't um, come off, but I'll, I'll try if the others come off. Well, we got a nail out here. And look at that, it's that same kind of riveted nail we've seen before. So, pretty impressive they kept it consistent so far in the heel construction. So the heel, and I don't know if they bought it like that or if it was constructed differently, but you can clearly see you had two layers of leather. It seems much more like a you know high quality leather. Of course, it's dry now over the years, but one, two, and then on top, because you had the shoe, that was curved, right? The heel was also curved. So it wasn't a full layer. It was just wrapped around on the side. So pretty cool. So this layer now comes off like so. And then you see even this here, you know, I didn't cut this. This just came apart like that. 
So that's pretty cool. Here we have the Allen Edmonds leads. It's a nice leather. I can feel there's that fabric layer underneath. So the leather has a nice kind of soft, cushy touch. Obviously a thicker sole. They still sell this today, but the last is different in the shape. It has a little stamp here that says damaged. So I assume those were their seconds. I looked around if I could quickly see a damaged piece. The other one here doesn't have it. I'd assume it would be sold as a damaged pair, but who knows? I mean, they're constructed the same way in the same factory, so I'm not too concerned about it. There it is. It has that angle. It seems same construction like the old one. Oh, you can see the leather is so brittle that even on the sole level, it already breaks. But it's that same construction that we saw that this extra kind of triangle piece that they laid in. Uh, it looks like a compressed leather of some kind, I would guess. Or maybe it's just because it's so, it's so old. Yeah, but look at that. It doesn't look doesn't necessarily seem like top grain, but maybe it's because it's all so dry. This does have like a compressed look to it though. Same nails though. And uh, different like construction where the, the outset was built up. Now you see the uh, famous 360 welt from Ellen Edmonds. They use a Gucci welt and they always advertise the 360 welt in recent history. That being said, there's really no difference in having a welt that goes from here to here or around the heel. There's no benefit. Typically, a bespoke shoemaker goes from here to here and leaves it off. So they can really tightly pull it up and just the heel looks a lot more elegant. So next up, let's go through the sole stitching here and try to cut it open. As you know, as you can see, L. Atmans typically has this kind of open channel stitching and so you can see where the outer sole was welted on. Now this is not the Gucci welt. The Gucci welt is, is on the inside and we'll see that part later on. Now the welt is cut from the bottom and ideally now we want to remove the outer sole. So basically the welt is on top here and the outer sole is here. I'm trying to find the different layers and then I want to take them apart. Voila, this is the outer letter sole. And that's usually what you walk through. You can see this shoe wasn't um, heavily walked on. Nice piece of solid sole leather. All right, sole, our sole. Different labeling, different branding but still like stiff sole leather. It's kind of the outsole here. L. Letman's outsole. Very similar to the other one with the same logo. I don't can tell any difference. So, that was the outer sole. Nice piece of leather, some kind of glue in there. Yeah, pretty good quality. And now here we see the Ostendo cushioned heel. That's probably what they meant by that. And at the time it was probably a novelty. This looks like not even rubber. Maybe it's just hardened over the years. I don't know. 
it's le it feels like a plastic. Okay, so you can see outer sole, thick leather, and all that means damaged. And then, interestingly, there's a piece of fabric here. No idea what that is for. So next layer. Midsole, full leather. And again, our Ostendo friend. So you can see it was light, so it was a little longer on the outside than the inside. So now as you can see here, we have um, a shank, and Allen Edmonds is known for their wooden shank. Some other companies use a composite shank or a um, metal shank, typically. Sometimes they claim that when you have a metal shank, you know, and you go to the airport, the TSA um, will beep, and you have to take off your shoes. With a wooden shank, you don't have that issue. It's a flexible shank, and um, but it breaks, right? So if you have the chance that for some reason you do it too much, it can break. So I'll just keep the shank here. Otherwise, you see here, uh, this is cork. This is not a layer of cork, um, as maybe a custom shoemaker would offer you. This is just typical glue mixed with a little cork. And the idea is that your foot will get used to it over time and it will be more comfortable to walking without being too squishy and soft. This material is pretty typical to what you see in a ready-to-wear Gucci welded shoe. So there's nothing bad about it. This is very, very typical. Okay, getting it out here. Over here, you can see there's a little metal tack. And here is one, two. I don't know why they use those. I would assume it's to keep things together, maybe on the uppers or anything like tucked in. I've been to the Allotments factory and I did not notice these little tacks. Underneath the cork here, you can see another layer here. I don't know if this is a thermal layer. Then out here is, is the welt. And then in here, these are like, this is like the upper leather, the lining leather kind of stuff here. And we'll see more as we take them apart, what we kind of have. Getting out the insole of the shoe, which is exactly what you stand on here. All right, this is the insole. And you can see from the bottom here, there was the insole. So underneath, you just had this wooden shank, then the cork, and then the outsole. There was no foam or anything of that kind. You see the cork mass that we also saw before. Here's a shank, again, wooden shank, not thermoplastic. It was placed rather far back in the shoe. Typically, you see it more like maybe placed here. So you wonder why it was placed so far back. Maybe oversight, maybe it shifted during production. It's obviously a new shoe that has never been worn. So the glue, it's working really well. Same construction as before, with the exception of the shank being further back. Ah, interesting. Apparently, there's like a, a layer of something. It's almost like a, it's not a shank, but it's a stiffer, kind of almost like a thermal plastic layer. Yeah, I wonder if that's supposed to be instead of a shank? We'll see. We'll see, it's definitely a di slightly different shoe. So you can see all that means changed the way they did things over the years. This is a nice thick cork. Maybe it's because the shoe hasn't been worn much and it wasn't compressed. Yeah, looking at it here, it's it's floppy. It's not stiff or anything. Uh, interesting. You can see a layer of plastic in here. Um, sometimes in shoe factories, they wrap the shoe in plastic so the leather can't be scuffed. And then when it's tacked on, there's a little layer of plastic film that you can still see here. 
Um, as you can see, no shank. At least nothing that I can see for now. Just the cork. It's definitely dry, but you know, you'd expect from a shoe that old. I mean, cork, right? It's this bark from the tree. So, I also don't know how these were stored over the last 50 years. Yeah, a lot more porous. If you compare, here's some of the new stuff. It's very flexible. And then here's the old stuff. It's just falling apart. But this looks like the insole right underneath. Oh, and look at that. The usual suspects. The little tacks that they used all along still here. You see a nail here. Now that's unusual. That's the first time we're seeing a nail. Before, remember, we saw those little kind of tacks that were used all along. This is the traditional shoemaker's way. So I would guess this shoe is the oldest one of the bunch because all the others had the same system all the way to the latest one we, we just opened. Again, there doesn't seem to be any shank. Part of their flex promise. You see on the welt here, it's disconnected here because the welt is actually a long strip that is then bent, formed into shape. And, and it's open. It's not um, stanced or cut out from a single piece of leather. This is the, the weld strip. You can see it. So you see this is not an aniline dyed leather, but in fact the top brown is a lot lighter than what's underneath. Now aniline dyed leather is generally a very good leather. Top coated leather can be good, but the majority of cheap leather is always top coat colored, not aniline dyed. When uh, it is aniline dyed, chances are it is of high quality. So it's a good indicator, but it not it's not like absolute truth. Metal tacks here that keep the uppers together. So probably they don't shift when uh, the shoe is sewn together or the uppers are sewn together. You see here, there's like a lining material underneath the uh, penny loafer part. And you can also see that the leather was um, burnished after it was sewn together. You can see here from the outside, it looked like it was one piece of leather, but in fact, they have seams here. And they do that to basically just save on the cost of leather. If you have smaller pieces, you can get more yield out of any given skin. You can also more easily cut around defects. The lining, which seems to be leather, and it's attached to the outer layer, which has an additional lining layer. The same lining that we found underneath the loafer bridge there. Now, as we come to the back here, you see something white, and this is a thermal or thermoplastic cap, the heel cap which is supposed to keep the heel stiff so the shoe lasts for a longer time. It gives you stability when you walk. Traditionally, you know, if you go to a custom shoemaker, this is all leather, a very stiff leather that is shaped after it has been wetted. Looking at the stitches, you can see there's a different stitch density here than it is here. It gets a little wider. So I would guess this was done by hand because of the inconsistent stitching. So it seems like it was one piece of leather, and they just pinched it together. As you can see here, it says, handcrafted in the USA. This is the top piece. They added another layer of another interlining. See over here, the piece on top is continuous, the pieces underneath are not. It's white cloth interlining in the back, and then some black underneath and there was of course the thermal cap which is still on this side so it's between the outer layer and the lining you see uh, there's just the layers that all come together and then this leather is sewn on top so it's nicely piped you've got a smooth edge on top nice level of workmanship this thread seems like a waxed thread which is typically what you see when shoemakers use stuff you can see here, this is one piece of leather. 
and they just put a liner up to here, which gives it a little more fullness. Then they tie it together tightly from underneath. So yeah, this is good quality, you know, well done. Just like a shoemaker would do it. You see all these metal tags in here? They're all over the place. Okay, so you can see again, there's this kind of fabric liner all over the place between the lining leather and the uppers. Seems to be like a nice lining leather, by the way. It's soft. It's definitely dyed. So I wonder if it would color off if you had like white socks, for example. Then you have that thermal cap again, just like you had in the heel. And then underneath, there's really just, it's just glued on onto the leather. There's nothing else there. The seam just comes here on the side versus on the outside. The seam was here in the back. So it's just shifted. So it's not on top of each other. Because if it was, it would create the leather to bunch up in that area. By moving it around, they're preventing that from happening. You can see here they sew in the Alan Edmonds sticker from the back. So you could see it on the inside. Yeah, you can see like before, leather underneath, almost like crust leather, then nicely burnished and finished and colored on top. Let's see the same kind of construction, same thread color as before. You can even see all the tags. Same procedure here, 360 welt all around. Looks slightly different color, but still one piece of leather. Same construction, right? This is the gem band, and it's like glued onto here. In a custom shoe or bespoke shoe, you'd have this insole to work out a channel, and then a gem band. There's no gem band, but it's it's connected by sewing it. It's not just glued. All right, here is the insole from the bottom. And now they have an insole lining. They say custom cork insole, handcrafted in America, from import materials, it's the style grand view. So this is basically a lining leather material insole. It's backed by a lining and a little foam pad is added for comfort. Eventually the foam will kind of wear out and lose its cushiness. This insole, on the other hand, is leather. It's not a different material. And it looks very similar to the insole that was in the other element and shoe that you would directly stand on. Here it's not as neatly finished. It's the same lining material that you had here. It feels very similar to what we had before. Okay, full brook upper ear. See all the tags, just like in the old shoes. Broguing holes are backed by a fabric, so they, so they look kind of dark from the top. Now here you see that fabric backing all across the bottom here. All the sewing here creates a little bulging and then nice piping on top, so it looks good. You can see the upper here for the wingtip, slightly kind of taped reinforcement here, so the leather doesn't rip in the area is where it's where there's demand for support. Fabric backing, another kind of layer here in the back, and then the thermoplastic cap, otherwise leather lining, very, very similar, if not identical, lining, just different here, cut differently because of the model and sewn together differently. Leather seems to be of decent quality. I don't see any issue with it. Exact same text as on the old shoes and thermal cap with a familiar cloth lining on top. Otherwise, same here, just slight reinforcements here in the toe area, glue and the leather lining. 
new label, new marketing, but construction pretty much identical. The only difference really is that you don't just stand on this anymore, but you have a little bit of a foam pad under the heel and then another layer of lining on there, which I don't think is bad at all per se. It makes the shoe maybe a tiny bit smaller and tighter, but if they adjust the last, I don't see why not. Here you see the nails still from the inside. And uh, I want to take those out first so I don't hurt myself. So insole is here, an insole liner. And then underneath of that is a layer of white foam. Just so it's softer to walk on it. But underneath of that is actually an insole made out of a material. In Germany, it's called Lefa. It's like a leather fiber material. That's what you find in like, you know, 99% of all like cheap shoes. That's the kind of stuff you see there. Interestingly, you also see this uh, metal shank, which, you know, Typically, Al Lemons has the wooden shank. So that makes me wonder if they make it in the same factory, and if so, if they just do it for the loafers. We saw the other loafer, that wasn't the case in there. But in here, you can see all the nails, and they pretty much look like the other ones that we saw. Okay, so insole liner was on top of this partial leather fiber insole foam. The shank is attached with um, two little rivets. I've seen that before in shoes. Sometimes that's the way it is done. So here is the shank with the little rivets. Here's this crappy kind of insole. Yeah, you can see it's not it's not high quality material. Now on the inside of the shoe here, you see it's like mock style sewn together all the way underneath here and then connected here. And then at the bottom, they added in another layer of foam. They left a hole here for a shank as well to get the foam through. You can see folded over on top to get it a little more glued down. So that's the back heel cap. That seems less durable. Honestly, this seems more like cardboard, even though it may be another kind of leather fiber, but definitely more lower quality material here in the heel cap. Trim on top, just like lined with this kind of thin black liner. You can really see here outer leather layer and there's another layer here in between maybe just because it's in the heel to get a little more structure but overall it's a softer shoe the cap is softer so they used a much softer material there so it's a little lining that you would see there's basically this layer of glue it almost looks like a glue tape can't peel that off. It's directly glued onto the outer layer. That's a very different L Edmonds than what you usually see. I don't think it's age-based. I also think it's partially based on this moccasin style. So glad we opened up this one because it's quite different. Here, that seems to be the insole. As you see, no shank quite yet. As you can see here, leather heel sewn together in the middle here. These are the back pieces here. You can see they tape the edges with the same material that we've seen before, just to reinforce it. As you can see here, another under layer underneath the fabric, which is already backed you can see the texture is different here. So there's this fabric that is backed here and then something softer is added underneath. And then we have the 
thermal plastic heel caps again. So you can see these are the uppers. It's definitely glued on. Leather was glued into the fabric, so nothing shifts. Down here you see all these tacks again. As you can see here, reinforced black fabric layer on leather, glued on to this muslin piece, which is backed by another layer. Exact same construction as what we've seen before. Cut leather, black backing reinforced, then piping on top and lining on the inside. Leather-wise, if you look at the leather here, you can really see here the white coming through. Definitely scuffs up more easily. You can see there's a finer backing, relatively thin. And this is kind of like, I don't know, almost like a softish linen. I don't know, it's a cotton. Nice material for spectator, I think. Just like before, typical leather uppers backed with a lining. And this here is the insole. Looks quite a bit darker. Looks like they put that piece of fabric on there again. Let's see, this is the sole. Just a little piece of fabric. There's no shank in there. Apart from that, very similar to the loafer that was non moccasin and Goodyear welted, and the modern Port Washington Allen Edmonds. Top part, folded edges with a interlining of all leather. Interesting. Solid leather. I mean, well done stuff. So this was the tongue on top, just folded and then glued, skived beforehand so it doesn't, so it looks neat and flat from the front. You can see it's like the st stitching kind of slight irregularities, but that's, that's cool. It's just a handmade, handmade product. It's interesting that they made this, this cut and overlaid it with this part. I wonder why they did it, maybe to take out material so it doesn't stretch. I don't know. And here we see probably the biggest difference to modern day elements. Biggest difference, no thermal plastics. So you had a layer of leather, then some form of tape that was applied to the leather. No, that's just at the edges. It's this kind of fabric material with an adhesive backing that was added. And you had it again from the other side, so two layers of some form of a fabric material, and then a heel cap made of what seems to be leather. Quite cool. So, wow, 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 that's a good message. If you look inside of here, that cut, you can see there's individual fiber strands attached to it. I wonder how they, maybe they stretch the fibers, then put the leather around it and let it go back. This was definitely a more difficult thing to do. Oh, well, see how it's falling apart here. But this was a, a heel cap. Seems to be a leather product, pretty stiff. I wonder if they did this or if they bought the piece like that. It's just like 3L. So I'm not, not sure what exactly happened there. So this top part, similar to the other moccasins, they have had this kind of stitching here that was just decorative. And this all comes out one piece, kind of mock toe, just making it look neat. Leather quality, I mean, it seems a very nice leather, even after all these years, the touch is pretty nice. It's definitely, you know, has, has this top coating. If I scuff up the top coat here, you can see underneath this kind of whitish leather. Otherwise, it doesn't look like it's sanded. It's still looking good after 50 years. Can't complain about that. It was just one layer of leather, pretty thick. 
and these fabric interlinings. You can see all those metal tags on the side here. That interesting front cap is not leather. It's some form of a starched fabric, it seems. Leather lining. And this is just another layer of fabric. Ah, and you can even see. This feels like a, a linen. So the front was linen lined, which is not something that's done today anymore. But I have some old church's shoes where they did it as well. I find it quite comfortable. So back was leather lined, front was linen lined. Pretty cool. As you can see here, this is the gen band that was again glued on to the insole. So the 360 weld could happen. One nice piece of leather, Biscayne Alan Edmonds Ostendo cushioned heel. Where is it? Here it is. My last thing was this really cool looking strip here and what's inside of it. Let's see if we can learn a little more about that. So this is definitely leather on top and you can see these strands in here though. How cool is that? Must have been a new technology at the time. And now you can see as I pull, it actually comes off. Obviously it was on the shoe, so it wasn't meant to, to come off the way it does now. It was this like elastic material. And then they took leather, embossed it, knowing that they could, because the embossing was there, that's where the leather would continue to crease. It's a bit like a Safiano leather, for example, where you, you know it's gonna crease, right? So if you define the crease line, you know that's where it's gonna happen. And that's exactly what they did here. But they didn't just put a, a ribbed elastic band there, but they, they put leather on top there. Pretty cool level of workmanship. I ha have not seen it before, and I appreciate that more. Now in here, it doesn't flex as much because at the bottom it's all attached, but it flexes a little bit. Pretty cool. All right, here's the kind of welt. Still feels a lot sturdier than the one yesterday. I think it was also bigger. Interesting, what is that? Almost looks like a plastic strip here that was built in. No idea what that was for, to be honest. Not something we saw at the others. And it's just tacked in here on this side and on that side with a little, little tack. And here you see those little tacks again. So maybe this one nail was just something that someone added. Okay, so this is the leads insole with the gem band attached. I'm gonna take off the gem band now. Yeah, this is just the gem band, it was just glued on. Leather, insole, gem band, and the cork. Oh, interesting, this one doesn't have a leather, or linen lining, it had these kind of perforated leather linings. Still in good shape, as you can see, and the little tags seem to be oxidized inside of here. Now you can see there's again this interlining, leather lining, fabric interlining, gives the leather a bit softness on the touch. Upper leather lining, no fabric here in between on the tongue, interestingly. This is a Blücher style, some say Blaucher, so named after a German General or Admiral von Blücher. And up here you can see a piping was attached, a dark color. You also can see here they have it zigzagged at the edge, allowing it to be a little more flexible when it goes along the edges. Pretty cool stuff. As far as the upper leather go, you can see, you know, layer on top, it's lighter underneath, it has this kind of nice kind of a hatch grain pattern. Seems to be to me it's like a good quality leather. After all these years, it's obviously a little more brittle. But it still feels nice and, and supple. 
Okay, otherwise here is the lining, obviously. So we can take that apart. Then we see again this heel cap, the tape that actually came from here. They just taped it over. These are just sewn together and kind of cut straight and taped over. The lining of the shoe with this stiffened toe cap and this kind of leather paperish feeling heel cap. And then here the Elements label sewn in. So you see it in the front. So overall, what did we learn? We had one outlier, this Sanibel shoe here, which almost seemed like it was made in a different factory. I know that all the hand sewn typically is done in the Dominican Republic these days. I don't know if these were outsourced or made in Port Washington. The thing says handcrafted in the USA. I have my doubts based on the fact that it's a shoe that is very different. Otherwise, the other five here, they are pretty much similar in construction. They use the same tags from here to here. They use the same nails from here all the way to here and back, which I find impressive. The weld the construction is, is all pretty much the same. Yes, they use a different machine here than they did here. Otherwise, though, if you look at the others, it's all kind of the same machine channeled. Um, effectively hasn't changed much. Here in the old shoes, they have a different last shape. The new leads are still around, a little more updated, modern last. I think they reduced the fabric interlining between the leather lining and the uppers. Um, it just felt a little more supple when you touched it. Um, we don't have that anymore. Otherwise, the letters may be a little stiffer, but it's just a matter of preference. These here are quite soft. I'm sure you can find softer too. Level of workmanship, a little finer here. Um, stitch density is higher. They had these, you know, leather that was embossed and then folded around an elastic. Um, you had this Ostendo heel, which was this kind of blackish uh, material. Um, I don't know exactly what it is, but. Uh, was supposed to be a comfort heel, so no shank here, no shank here. These two have the Elements wooden shank that um, helps a little more when you kind of move. This area stays a little straighter versus here, I think, over time, as you stand and put pressure on it, it may sag a little more. At the end of the day, though, you can buy elements with confidence. The claims that, you know, from this shoe to that shoe, the quality has declined is not true from what I can see. Yes, they use a sock liner all the way through um, and a little foam pad, but it doesn't hide any, like, sole that is of inferior quality. There's still a leather sole underneath of it. You can rip out the sock liner and it's all good. So you're still getting a good quality shoe. Um, their lasts are a little bit boxy and not as refined in my mind, but at the end of the day, if you like the look, you get a quality shoe that can be resold and uh, rest assured that the quality level has only changed ever so slightly from 50 years ago, which in terms of shoes is a good thing because mass factory made shoes typically have become a lot worse since then. <laughs>